Okay. Let's see those skills. Everybody take a picture. Dr. Anir, I have a question. Yep. What's the three plus the four minus? We didn't go over that. Okay, that's right. We'll go over it right now. Okay. I don't know if you're breaking us up into groups and then just making us magically know this. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were supposed to magically know yeah. it. Okay, so you guys take a picture of it. Everybody has it saved. Okay, so let's talk about ions. So if we have, let's say fluorine. How many electrons does fluorine have? Nine. How many protons? Nine. How many neutrons? <coughs> Yeah, you want to break in honey? Okay. I got you already. How many neutrons? Ten. Okay. So if I have F minus, F minus is considered to be an ion. That means it's gaining an electron. So anything that has a charge associated with it, if it has a positive charge or if it has a negative charge, those are considered ions. So we'll say ions are charged <laughs> charged atoms or Compounds. Okay, so if I have F minus, that means that I've gained a single electron. So now instead of having nine electrons, I have 10 electrons. So let's write this. My protons stay the same because the proton is always going to define the atom. So there's going to be nine protons. And my neutrons are going to stay the same. So the only thing that's changing is the number of electrons. Okay. So if it's a negative ion, a negative ion is called an anion. Anion? Yep. Anion equals negative ion. And a cation, and I'll show you an example of that in a second, is a positive ion. Okay. So let's say we have CA two plus. So this is calcium, right? This tells me that I have I've lost two electrons. So how many electrons does calcium normally have? Everybody has a periodic table available? Absolutely 20. not. 20. 20. Okay, so it normally has 20. Protons, how many protons does it have? 20. 20. 20. Okay. And then neutrons? 20. Okay, so 
calcium two plus now has 18 electrons. Same number of protons. As it normally has, and same number of neutrons that it normally has. <clears throat> okay, so the reason why it has a positive charge is because you have neutrons and protons left. How many, how many protons are going to be totally balanced if there's 18 negative electrons? Two. So two of them aren't going to be balanced? Is that what you're telling me? So that 18, means of them, gonna, 18 of them will be balanced. 18 of them will be balanced. So that means I'm going to have 18. a plus two charge, right? Because, because I'm going to have two over. positive charges that are going to be left over. Do you see that? Uh, I, I have a question, Dr. Harry. Yep. So um, sometimes when I'm looking at the period, this, all these elements in the periodic table, how yep. do we uh, know which one is positively charged or negatively charged? How do you know when they're going to be positively? So if it's on a periodic table, they're, they're all neutral. The way that they become charged is if they start to react or if, if they've already reacted and they've already given up electrons or taken away. So let's, let me go to the PR table. Take a picture of this. Keep, it, keep this in mind. So everybody take a picture. And then uh, I'm going to switch screens. Save it. Share. New share. Okay, can you see my periodic table? Yes. Okay, so let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so on your periodic table, you have metals and nonmetals. Right? You see metals and nonmetals? Okay. Okay, so now your metals, they're going to almost in all cases try to get a positive charge. And I'll explain to you why they try to get a positive charge in a second. And then your nonmetals, these guys over here, they're going to have a negative charge when they form ions. Okay? So metals, they're going to have a positive charge. Your nonmetals are going to have a negative charge. Okay? So, now, these are your noble gases. See these noble gases over here? Okay. So, your noble gases, they're noble, right? So, they're kind of like the cool kids. Can I show you guys the... Uh, the chemical party video. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. I'm, I'm hating on you guys. So remind me to show you the chemical party video after this. Okay, so these guys are the noble gases. They're like the cool kids. So everybody wants to be like the cool kid, right? So all of the elements ultimately want to be like the noble gases. And so to be like the noble gases, you can be like them by gaining or losing electrons. So by gaining or losing electrons, it allows you to be stable. These guys are stable. Okay. So as in your goal, why are you guys taking this class? Are you taking this class because you love me and you love chemistry and prereq. 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 Right? Pre and and, uh, and you're going through school because of what? Nursing. Because you want to be a nurse. Why do you want to be a nurse? Because I like people? to I like to help people. Because you want to help people, that's the only reason why you want to be a nurse. Absolutely not. Financial. Absolutely not. It's not Financial. because of the money. Absolutely, definitely. So, would you say that ninety nine point nine 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 percent of you guys want to be here because you want money? Yes. <laughs> definitely. Yes. yes, sir. Nope. No lies. Better life. A little more stability. Yes. Okay, so we're all on the same page right there, right? We kind of understand that. Okay, so we all want to be here because we want money. So these guys have money. They're already stable, right? 
And so everybody wants to be like them. They want to have stability in their lives. And so the way that you get stability, if you're one of the other elements, you're going to either gain electrons or you're going to lose electrons. Now, and I want you to think about this. Here we have fluorine. You see fluorine? You see where fluorine is located at? Fluorine is a halogen. Now, the halogens are really close to being a noble gas. If they get one more electron, one more electron, they're going to be act, they're going to act like neon. They're going to be like neon. So if you gain one electron, you get to be like neon. Now, if you're just like this close to getting your degree, right, like this close, let's say I'm the only thing that's stopping you from getting your degree. Are you going to beg, barter, cheat, or steal to get there? Um, you guys are not answering me. You got to play with the game. Come on. That's a trick question. It's yes, not it a is. trick question. It's a, I don't want to answer. It's a trick question. It's not a trick uh, question. <laughs> we would never cheat. Uh, never. See? Exactly. Never, right? I can borrow maybe, but not cheat. So, in other words, you guys are telling me in a nice way of saying, hell yeah, I do it, but as long as I don't get caught, right? Okay. Okay. Yes. So, now, that's exactly how they're feeling. They're this close, right? So they're going to want to take that electron. Right? They see you in a dark alley. You have an electron. They're going to punk you for it. Bitch, give me that electron. That's my electron, right? They're going to punk you for it, okay? Because they're that hungry, right? And because they're that hungry, they're going to be very reactive. They're anxious to get that damn electron. So when they get them, they're just going to be like, whoo, they're just going to go off, right? It's going to be something really flashy, right? So they're very reactive uh, atoms. And that's because they're so close to being a noble gas. Now, the further you get away, right, let's say oxygen. Oxygen is two away, still kind of close. So oxygen is going to be pretty strong. So when it gets an opportunity where it can take an electron, and particularly, and you got to think about this, there's some logic to, to when you take and when you share. Okay? So it's going to take the opportunity to take electrons, you know, so it's going to punk somebody for a couple of electrons and say, hey, come on, give them up, you know. And nitrogen a little bit the same way. Now, when you get here to carbon, carbon's a little funny, right? Carbon is like, well, you know, I guess I can take, oh, I guess I can give. Because if you look where carbon's located at, it's one, two, three, four from being a noble gas this way. But if we go the other way, if it loses four electrons, one, two, three, four, it'll be like helium, another noble gas. So carbon is like, eh, I can go either way, right? Carbon's a little bit, well, we'll put it like this. Carbon's a whore, right? And I'll explain this a little bit more, right? One of the reasons why carbon's a whore, because it's four away, it also means it can have four bonds. So it likes foursomes, right? So it can do foursomes, it can do threesomes, it's all into that kinky stuff. So carbon's a little bit of a whore. Okay, so nitrogen, one, two, three, three away. So if you gain three electrons, you'll be like a noble gas. Or if it loses, one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Now I want you to think about this logically. So if you can make $500 by gaining by mowing three lawns or $500 by mowing five lawns, which one are you going to do? Three. 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 Why? It's less. Money. It's less, right? Ultimately, it's less energy. You have to work less for that same amount of money, right? So that's the same way that these guys are thinking. So I have a choice. I can go this way and gain. That's going to be a lot easier for me than to lose Five, right? They're looking to do the least amount of work as possible, right? So you want to be like a noble gas, but you don't want to put a lot of work into it, okay? So again, carbon, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right? So four either way, that's why he's kind of iffy. He's not too excited about doing any because it's the same amount of work either way, okay? Okay, so are we good so far? You kind of get so far? Okay, so now let's talk about 
fluorine again. So fluorine, I kind of drew them earlier. Fluorine is always going to have, when it forms an ion, a negative charge because it just needs that one electron, one extra electron to be like neon. Oxygen is always going to have, what do you guys think? A negative two charge, right? Oh. Because oxygen's right here, one, two. It needs two electrons to be like a noble gas. Okay. Nitrogen? Negative three. Negative three. That's right. And carbon? Negative four. So it could be a negative four. Or, or, or it could be a positive four. So positive. depending on who he's playing with. Okay. So now you guys kind of see that. Now when you get over here to beryllium, I mean, sorry, boron, not beryllium. Beryllium's over here. Boron. Now you could either lose three electrons. One, two, three and be like helium, or you can gain five. One, two, three, four, five. Which one are you going to want to do? Lose. Lose three. You want to lose three. So if you lose three, that means you become positive, right? And you're going to be positive three because you lost three electrons. So boron is going to be a... Positive three? Yep. And we write it as three plus. Don't ask me why. Okay, so beryllium, what do you think beryllium is going to do? Plus two plus. Plus four. Not plus four. Plus no. two. Plus two. Plus two. Plus two, right? Because it's only two away from being a noble gas. Okay, what about lithium? Positive. One. So it's just going to be Li positive. Somebody was excited, okay? Because it just needs to lose one to be like helium. Now, these guys, these guys are called alkali metals. Alkali, right? Alkali, doesn't that sound pretty rough? Alkali, compared to their neighbor here, these guys are called alkaline. Doesn't that kind of sound kind of weak? Alkali, doesn't that sound hard? It sounds Come pretty on. tight, alkali. Alkali, right? Doesn't that sound, yeah, you see, I'm alkali. Sounds like a gang or something, right? I belong to alkali, right? Alkali. So those guys, they're reactive. They're very reactive. The alkali metals are very reactive because they only need to get rid of that one electron, right? So if you sit there and you put them in air, they're going to want to react. If you put them in water, hell yeah, they're going to re want to react. It's going to be like fire, right? You're going to see sparks and stuff going, steam coming out they're gonna be pretty excited to react, right? Because they're only one away. So they're gonna be very, very reactive, okay? The alkaline, their name kind of tells you, alkaline, they're gonna be less reactive. They're gonna react, but it's, it's gonna take them a lot longer. They're kind of laid back, they're a little chill. Alkaline, you know, chill. You know, doesn't that sound chill, right? So all of these guys here are always gonna be plus two. Right? So they're going to lose two electrons all the time. So they're going to have a plus two charge associated with them. These guys here, they're always going to be plus one. Because they're literally one away from being a noble gas. These guys are always going to be two away from being a noble gas. Right? These guys are more reactive than these guys. Now these guys here, these are called transitional metals. Transitional metals are a hot mess. Right? Hence the name transition. Change. Oh, they're constantly going through change. They're complicated. You know, they can't keep their minds straight, right? So let me give you an example. So we have chromium. Chromium could be Cr2+. Chromium could be Cr, uh, Cr4+. And chromium could be Cr+. Plus. And 
occasionally, very rarely, it can be CR6+. plus. Okay, so it's not always consistent. It's not always the same. So your transitional metals and your post-transitional metals, these guys, they're, they're hot messes, right? So it just depends on who they're playing with, what their charge is going to be, and how you handle them, okay? So their charge can change. Transitional metals change. Transition means change, right? So transitional metals meaning that their charge are going to be able to change when they form ions. And it's always going to be positive. Okay. So they can change their charges and that's it basically. Yeah. And that's kind of a hint. Let you know that they're not always going to be the same charge. Okay. So now these are all examples of ions. And this is also how you determine what the charge is going to be on the ion. All your halogens, they're always going to be a minus one. Your, your, uh, uh, yeah, your chalicogens, they're always going to be minus two. Your nocogens, these guys are always going to be minus three. Okay? And these guys, like I said, either plus, plus four or minus four. A whole row? Not the whole row, because these guys down here, this is where you get into the post-transitional metals. You see the light blue? Right. Okay? So these guys, they're going to behave like your metals do. Right? So they're going to behave kind of like your transitional metals, right? Even though they're post transition after change, but they still are going to go through change. Okay. Okay. So you guys kind of got that. Yes. Okay. So now let's analyze. So we had talked about fluorine. So if we had F minus. Right? That means it's gained one electron. So, how many electrons does it have now? Ten. 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 How many protons? Nine. Nine. Okay. So that's how we get that minus charge, that minus one charge, because it has ten electrons, and we know electrons are negative, negative charge, and protons are positive charge. So if we subtract the two from each other, we get or if we add them together, we get our negative. So we have one extra negative charge, right? You guys get that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So phosphorus, say the phosphorus ion. Okay. How many electrons does it have? Uh, 18. Oh, right, right there, 15. 15. So phosphorus ion has 18, right? Because it has yeah. three extra added on. And then how many protons? 15. 15. 15. Okay. Now you see that's different from phosphorus by itself because how many electrons does phosphorus have? Not the phosphorus ion. Or we call it 15. 15. And it has how many protons? 15. Okay. So piece of cake? Yes. Okay, yes. So, so let's see if we can make it a little bit harder. All right? Okay, so let's say I have the P33. Three plus, three minus, okay? So now, how many electrons do I have? Eighteen. Eighteen. How many protons? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. 
33? Is it going to be 33 protons? It's going to be 18. No. 21? Plus 21. Nope. 15. 36 electrons? Nope. 15? 15. 15, right? Because its atomic number is never going to change. The number of protons will never change. Oh, okay. Right? Remember, protons define the element. So phosphorus is always going to be 15. This number here, this number here is our new atomic mass, right? So it's our new atomic mass. Our new atomic mass is 33. So what is the mass number? Mass number is 33. So if the mass number is 33, how many neutrons must it have? Six. Did you say six? Fifteen. Now, now remind me, right? What is an isotope? Same atoms, different masses? Same atoms, different masses. Now, if the protons are always the same, then what has to be changing? The what is the mass of an atom? The number of neutrons. So how many neutrons must there be? 33. No, if the whole mass is 33 18. and you have 15 protons, right? Isn't it the weight made up of protons and neutrons? So we subtract it? That's right, yes. Oh. You don't remember all of that that we did all uh, last week? Uh, I wasn't there. <laughs> oh. Okay. So 15 okay. minus 33? 33 minus 15. I'm sorry. 33 minus 15? 18. 18. Okay. So we have 18 neutrons. So our new atomic mass is going to be 33, roughly. Now, if you want to be anal, you can actually calculate it. Yeah. Um, Did I get the 18 electrons again? Because we had three extra. Oh, that's right. But the number is 33. Yeah. So you're but going off the Remember, the mass, the mass is only made up of your protons and your neutrons. Remember? Electrons are kind of like a speck of dust on you, right? Okay. So you just have 18 specks of dust. That's not going to make a difference to your weight. Okay? Piece of cake? You want to try one more? It's a piece yeah. of cake. It's just adding this. Yes, it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> okay, so let's do... Let's do... Can I erase some of this stuff so it doesn't look so crazy? Yes. Okay, so we're going to do... So we're going to do PR... Five plus and one forty four. Okay, so electrons. Where is PR? So wait, one forty four is that your isotope? Yeah, it is. That is my isotope, yes. Okay. PR. I don't even see PR. I know me neither. Oh, 59. Okay, so am I going to have 59 electrons? Or is that protons? That's, That's protons. protons. Electrons, you have to subtract. Did you add five? Five protons and 54 electrons. So I have 59 protons. How many electrons? 54. 54. That's right. So, in this case, I've lost five electrons. I mean, five electrons. 
So now I, instead of having 59, I have 54. Yes. Okay, so how many neutrons do I have? Um, 44. Can you add them? I don't remember what you're doing. 144 minus. Is it, is it 85? 85. 44 subtract 59, right? 85. Yeah. What do you mean, 93? Where did you get 93 from? 85. Wait, what do you do again? <laughs> so, this is your new mass number, right? Yeah. So, if your mass number, It's 144. 85? Yeah, last number is 144. Oh, mass number, yeah. Yeah. I, was, I thought we were talking about uh, neutrons. My bad. Oh, we <laughs> I were. was behind. We were. Oh, okay. Okay. So our mass number is going to be the sum of your protons and your neutrons, right? So if you have your mass number, which we have, 144, you just subtract the number of protons. You always know the number of protons there are because you know the element, right? I see. Okay. So, 144 minus 59? 85. 85. And that's your neutron. And that's your number of neutrons. Yep. Okay, piece of cake? Yes. Atomic mass. Okay, the atomic mass. What would be the atomic mass? 144. That's right. What is that uh, positive five? What is it called? Like, is there a name for it? Yes, that's your, your ionic charge. Ionic? Your ionic charge. That's ironic. Ionic. Ionic. You said the atomic mass was 144? Yep. How did we get 144 again, just to clarify? Because your mass number is just your, it's going to be your, the mass of that particular, that particular isotope. And that particular isotope, your mass number is gonna give you that. Right? Okay, so it's the number that they give us? That's right, up here in this corner. Okay. So if it didn't have an isotope. What was that? If it didn't have an isotope, in order to get your neutron, you would just do the 140 minus 59? That, no, it'd be 141 because you take a whole number, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm there. Okay, that's good. Hang okay, on. so you guys got this, right? I have a quick question. I may have a quick answer. For the phosphorus one that we just did, um, you said that we added the, elect the amount of electrons and the ionic charge to get 18, right? So in the case of yes, because you had your ionic charge, which is, in yeah, this good. case, it's Plus, this case is plus. In the case of phosphorus, yeah, it, it was, was three minus, right? That means that you have three extra electrons. Okay. Right? So that so means you, you right. add three in this case, and then in this case, for the five plus, you minus five. So you subtract five from the number that you have. So you do opposite of what it says? Exactly. Okay, that's what I would need to figure yeah. out. Because remember, electrons are negatively charged, right? So if electrons are negatively charged, then you, by having three extra electrons, you have three extra charges. Yeah. Dr. Henry. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Can you please change this to when it does not have the ionic charge five? Can you repeat that, please? Sorry? Can I please do what? Can you please change the PR or to when it does not have the uh, five plus? So when it's PR, you want to say when it's PR? Yes. And, and then you want it still to be an isotope? 144, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, here, this is going to be 59, right? Because remember, if it doesn't have a charge associated with it, that means your protons and your neutrons, I'm sorry, your protons and your electrons are going to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And so that'll be 59. Where is the 59 from? Case, what was that? Where's the 59 from? 59, it comes from our number of protons. We get our number of protons from our atomic number. Oh, there it is. Got okay. it. Okay. Remember, the, the atomic number defines that element. That means that it tells you the number of protons it, it has. Your number of protons will never change. The only thing that can change are either your electrons, if it's an ion, so if it's charged, your electrons are going to change. If, it. it's, uh, if the mass changes, and that'll be over here, right? If your mass changes... So 59 is what? Is the atomic number. It's the what number? This huh? one, the 59 is the atomic like number. Cautious. Okay, so on your periodic table, 59 is the atomic number. So for PR with just the 144 in the corner, that would just be the mass number 144? Okay, so I'll repeat that one more time. PR? Um, for 144 PR, the new one that we just did without yep. the five plus, the mass yep. number would be 144, right? Okay. Yep. Thank yep. you. Okay, piece of cake. It's just adding and subtracting. Don't make it too hard. Yes. Okay, so you want to try one more? That's what I'm hearing. And then I'm going to put you in your rooms and punish you. I mean. <laughs> okay. I'd like to try one more, Professor Henry. Okay, let's see what you guys can do. Okay. So. AT minus 21. Not 221, just 21? It's 221, sorry, my bad. 221. Okay, number of electrons. 85. 86. 24. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I It'll heard a 86. couple. 86. Yay. 86 is the correct answer. Why is it 86 and not 85? Because we're gaining an electron, so you're going to add one. That is correct, because we're gaining an electron. That means we're adding an additional electron. Okay, so number of protons. 85. Number of neutrons? 136. Maybe. 136. That is correct. And how did you calculate that? The mass number subtracted by the protons. That's right. Okay, yeah. what is the mass number? 221. 221. That means the atomic mass is 221. Okay. Now you want some hose. Is that I want some hose, yes. Hose. So, number of electrons. I can't find the hose. It's easy to be on the right street, that's all. I got it. <laughs> Six, seven. seven. How many? 63. No, 16. 63. Yes. That's right. 63 because this is 4 plus. So normally it would be 67, so but we're losing subtract. four of them. Right. right. Okay, number of protons. Seven. 67. 67. Number of neutrons. 101. 101. Okay, 101. Number or mass, mass number? 168. And atomic mass? 
168. Piece of cake? Yes. Okay. So now you guys want to get in your rooms? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to send you to your rooms. <laughs> Teach you. Okay, so everybody got a picture of it? You know what you're doing now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're filling out the chart. You're filling out the chart. Okay. I'll give you yeah, about 15 minutes. Yeah, that's good. So piece of cake? Yes. However, I didn't do it with my group because, I mean, when I'm doing it, I need to focus and to have everybody talking. So I just muted it and did it on my own. Okay. How was it? Good. Piece of cake? Yeah. No, I thought I had an understanding, but I'm still struggling. So when you're walking us through it, I feel like I get it and understand it. Uh -huh. But when we're doing it on our own, I'm still like struggling. Okay. Like I'm still finding myself trying to guess or you know, trying to figure it out. So I got some of them, I think, but I have like half of them that I didn't get done. Okay. Well, you'll have ample opportunity with the homeworks, so. Okay, are we ready? So let's see, how many groups are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This works out, there's seven groups. So group one, you guys fill in the first, the first one, that would be Alexandria, Eric, Kelsey, and Natalie. I'll do it if you guys want. Okay. Group two, you guys do the second one. That's Fabian, uh, Heidi, Jose, Miguel, and Serena. Okay. Group three, you guys do the third one. That's Brisea, Brise 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 I can't say it. Brisea, is that correct? As I butchered badly. Daniela, Maria, and Reina. Group four, you guys do the fourth one. That's Ashley, Elizabeth, Lorraine, uh, Melissa, and Tomas. Group five, that's Eric, Mary, and Vanessa. And then group six, you guys do the sixth one. That's Anissa, Ibiri, Erica, Jennifer, and group seven, that would be Rocky, Anna, and Angeline. I didn't hear my name, so. How do you write on it? Well, Megan, that's probably because you got out so fast. Which group were you in? Who was in your group? I don't know. She was in my group, Professor. I believe we're group seven. I can't write in our day. So you used annotate? View options. Go options. All right. Annotate. Where do you find options? Options will be up top. In some cases, it'll be dot, dot, dot. Annotate. Oh, they already finished it. <laughs> Look, I write like you, Dr. Henry. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> My protege, huh? There you go. Especially that last one. Ooh. 
Ooh, I don't know what that one is. Shame, shame, shame. Can somebody fill that in, please? Hey, Dr. Henry. Yep. Did you hear me? I heard Okay. <laughs> Dr. Henry. That's all I heard. Um, are both labs due the 11th still? Yes. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, okay. I opened I them up again because, uh, yes, because you had it. There's another student. But I can change it if you want to turn it in early. Oh, no. No. Leave it the way it is. Are you sure? Yeah, I still trying to open it up. And then the homework, the 94 question homework, that one's due next week? Yep. Monday. Bye. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Dr. Henry, what did you uh, post for this, uh, this morning? Something about happy hour. No, not that. No. Um, about the the lab? Uh, I don't know. All I saw was happy hour. Oh, I sent you guys uh, an email about uh, about Labster. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Of, that's what it was. I, I, I get a lot of emails on Labster. A whole lot of emails on Labster. Yeah, I did what you said, and it still didn't load up. Did you follow the instructions on the new troubleshooting? I will do that this, as soon as I'm done with this uh, class here. Okay. I've seen you roll your eyes at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I didn't. I, next time I will, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will roll my eyes and snap my neck so you know. Handle that. it. Exactly. Okay, so let's go through it. Let's see. So for germanium. The atomic number is 32. That is correct. The mass number is 72. That is correct. The number of protons, 32. That is correct. The number of neutrons, 40. That is correct. The number of electrons is 32. That is correct. And it is an isotope. That is correct. Its mass number is 72. That is correct. OK. 10, 125. So that is, its atomic number is correct. The mass number is correct. Number of protons is correct. The number of neutrons is correct. Number of electrons is correct. And it is also an isotope. And its mass is 125. S35. So let's see, its atomic number is correct. Its mass number is correct. Its proton is correct. Number of neutrons is correct. Number of electrons is correct. And it is also an isotope, that is correct. And its mass number is 35. You guys got this, it looks like. Okay, uh -huh. TC, TC. Okay, so atomic number is 43, mass number, 102, number of protons. 40, oh, I see a mistake. Ah. Electrons is 40. I mean. Electrons is 40, neutrons. that is correct. Neutrons is 59. Yeah. Number of neutrons. It's 59? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so let's put in 59. Do you want us to change it? Yeah. We don't want any wrong stuff on here. I got you. You got it? Okay. Okay, and it is both. It's an isotope and an ion. And its atomic mass is 102. Okay, carbon 14, 
uh, or minus. So its atomic number is six. Its mass number is 14. Its proteins is six. Its neutra, I mean, that's protein. Its protons is six. Its uh, uh, neutrons is eight. Electrons is 10. And it is both. And its mass, atomic mass is 14. That is correct. Tellurium 132, 2 minus. Its atomic number, 52. Mass number, 132. Protons, 52. Uh, neutrons, uh, 80. Electrons, 54, and it's both. Oh, I like the way you wrote it, just to let me know. But you forgot that it's an ion. That's what the I is right there. Oh, to tell me it was an ion, but you have to put the charge on it. I was um, just sticking okay. up who for did, them. Who decided to erase the last row? Oh, there you go. Thank you. Got to make my life hard. Okay, so arsenic three minus. Okay, okay, 33, its mass number is uh, 75. Number of protons, 30. Number of neutrons, uh, number of protons, are you sure? Is 30? 33, no? 33, that's right. Remember, the number of protons are never gonna change. It's gonna be the same as the atomic number. Number of protons, incorrect. Uh, number of neutrons, so if it's 33, then That's your number of neutrons should be? 36. 42. 42. Okay, so 42. Number of electrons. 36. 36, that's right. And it is an ion, and only an ion. And its atomic mass would be, you have to write out the whole thing. So that would be wrong too. So it'd be 74.922. That's a two, not a seven. <laughs> Okay. I have a question. I may have an answer. So I'm not sure how I missed that, but I'm not sure how we are classifying them isotope or ion. Okay. Ion have charges. Isotopes have a change in their mass. So the change in mass is always going to be written on the left-hand side of the, the symbol. The charge is always going to be the upper left-hand side of the symbol. The charge is always going to be written on the upper right-hand side of the symbol. So if it's a plus or a minus, if it's a plus, you know it's a, is it a cation or an anion? I don't know. Cation is positive. So if it's a plus, then it's a cation or an anion. Cation. Cation, because it's positive. Get my bad joke. At least pretend like you get it. As a cat <laughs> paw, paw, cat paw, positive. Gosh. Okay. So an anion is negative. Yes. Anti-negative. Yep. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Piece of cake? Yes. Okay. And you saw the, where the mistakes are made. And I'm glad. Okay, so I like it when you guys make mistakes. Do you know why? Well, here, I like it when you make mistakes here. I hate it when you make mistakes <laughs> on the test. You want to know why? Because I have to grade that. Because we stuff. learn from them? Because <laughs> you learn from them, yes. Here you have an opportunity to learn from them. When you make it on the test, you can learn from them, but it also is a pain in the butt to grade. We just like, What was that? Um, I 
If you can just explain the ion and then why it's 74.922. I'm sure it's simple and I just can't figure out. I got the whole table correct except for those last two. Okay, so let's talk about the last, you're talking about these last two, right? Yes. So we'll just talk about this, uh -huh. this last one, right? And then we'll kind of work on that. Okay, so uh, the atomic number is always going to be the same, right? Mm -hmm. So if it has an atomic number of 33, that tells you also the number of protons. Protons will never change. So you should never be changing your proton. Your atomic number and your proton should be exactly the same. So mm -hmm. for arsenic, arsenic has an atomic number of 33. So that means it has 33 protons, okay? Mm -hmm. So now since it has 33 protons, and we know that this here is a three minus, that means we're adding three electrons. So that means that this guy has to be 36. So when we see minus three, that means we add three? That's right. Yeah. Because electrons rule the world. Well, at least in chemistry, they do. So they're female. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. And then ions, anything that has a charge is called an ion, right? So this guy is an ion because it has a charge, where this guy isn't an ion because it doesn't have a charge over here. Uh -huh. okay. okay. So three plus means both? You said three plus means both? Right. Is that why we say both? Because it's three plus? No, because it's asking you isotope or ion or both. So you're telling me if it's an isotope, that means that it has a different mass than it normally has. So okay. this is an isotope. That means its mass is going to be oh. different. And okay. then I'm sorry, this but... means that it's a charge, right? So that means it's both because it's an isotope and an ion. Okay. Not just one or the other. Like this guy here is just an ion. This guy here is just an isotope. These guys here, they're both. Because they so have a So if the change. mass number doesn't change from the original element, then it's just an ion. That's right. Dr. Henry, I have a question. Yep. So you see on the bottom how mass number 75, but the atomic mass is 74 point. How do you know when to make it a whole number? I know you said okay, mass number is always. Thank you. That is a good question. Okay, so it, it becomes a whole number if you have a new mass number, right? So here, this tells me that the mass of this is 132. Correct. This guy doesn't have a number up here. So then we use what's on the periodic table. Now, what's on the periodic table is actually an average of all of the isotopes. And you have to use them all because in this case, if you have enough of it, you're going to have all of them represented. So that one is going to be 74.992. But when we take the mass number, the mass number is just the whole number. So that means we're always going to round that one up to what it's supposed to be. So this is 74.9. So we take a look at this number. Are we going to round it up or are we going to leave it alone? Round it up. We're yeah. going to round it up, right? So then we're going to make it 75. But you tell me that mass number and atomic mass are the same thing. That's only if it has an isotope? So atomic, that's only when it's an isotope, yes. And, okay. and in all honesty, they're not exactly the same, but it's a rough estimate because, for instance, a proton weighs 1.0087. Okay. And a neutron weighs 1.0073, uh, I believe, or 74. I can't remember exactly. So, so if you calculated all of these up, like in this case, so 52 protons, well, multiply that by 52. It's going to be more than just 52, but ballpark figure, it's going to be 52. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Y yes. Okay. So yes, I think I understand. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. 
So if I really don't want it to be anal, right? And uh, I could sit there. I could have you guys calculate how much the the actual isotope really weighs, right? So you would go 52 in this case, and then this guy would be 80. So you multiply 52 times 80, and that will give you your actual atomic mass. Okay. Okay. But since, you know, it's like 0 0.00 and maybe off by zero in yeah. this case, but they're so close together that it's roughly just one, right? So we can just round this up to one, and that's what we do. And so, so that's why we just use that. Thumb, for rule of thumb, if it doesn't have an isotope, atomic mass, use a decimal. That's right. Okay. Yep. Don't, don't get PhD on me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself, you know? <laughs> then move on. Okay, so I guess this is a good stopping point. Is your brain working? No. Yeah.